What's up YouTube, Craig Lopez here with another tutorialism and today I'm going to be showing you five different methods for getting that famous sidechain pumping effect within Cubase 11. Now each of these different methods has a slightly different flavour and a slightly different outcome but at the very least you should wind up with one or two new tools for the toolbox to play about with. Now the first four methods I'm going to show you are available to all regardless of whether you're in Cubase Elements, Cubase Artist or Cubase Pro. The fifth method I'm going to show you is only available natively to users of Cubase Pro. However, I will show you a third party plugin that will give you the same result. Okay, so let's get into this. So when I'm talking about different ways of achieving that sidechain pumping effect, what I'm basically talking about is different ways of automating the volume up and down in my case around my kick drum. Now I want to talk about these drums for a second. These are all samples which I got from this sample pack here, Demure House Crates, which is available on Loop Cloud. Now I do have an affiliate link for Loop Cloud in the description below. So if you're looking to expand your sample library and you want to do that at no extra cost to yourself, but also want to help out the channel, Click on the link below and go check out Loop Cloud. It's super awesome. Anyway, let's have a look at what I've done. So logic would dictate that if I'm going to talk about side chaining, the first thing I would show you would be side chain compression. But because I'm a maverick, I'm not going to do that. The first thing I'm going to show you is chopper. And I'm using chopper on this top loop here. So let's just listen to the top loop on its own. And let's load up a chopper. So if you've never used chopper before, let's dive into the manual real quick and let's see what it is. So a chopper allows you to create a tremolo with or without additional panning effect. And if you don't know what a tremolo is, let's have a look at Wikipedia. A tremolo in electronics is a variation in amplitude, which is what we're looking for sometimes mistakenly called a vibrato. Okay, so let's have a listen to Chopper in its default state on this top loop. So if you've got headphones on, you'll be able to hear that it's panning from left to right. I don't actually want that in this case, so let's click on the mono button. We have different LFO shapes here. We have a dry wet control and a depth amount. Let's change the speed to one quarter because I want to go around my kick drum. And now we can hear it ducking on the on beat. Let's bring in the rest of the drums. Okay, so yeah, that's Chopper. Obviously, it's quite limited in what it can do. So the material that you use it on might be quite limited. But in the case of a simple ducking effect on my top loop, Chopper works a treat. Right, let's get into the next one. So next, we're going to look at Squasher, which I'm using on my bass. Now, Squasher comes new with Cubase 11. Now, what I would say the first time you use this is open up the parameter amount put the output down to 0 dB on each of the three bands. Also pull down the ratio on the up and down on all three bands and pull down the threshold and save that as your default preset so that every time you use it, you're going to be listening to the dry signal and you're not going to be affected by the change in volume and the compression that was on by default when I first loaded this up. So what is Squasher? Well, it's a multi-band upwards and downwards compressor, which also has a drive and a gate for each of those three bands. Now, what I'm going to do with this, instead of using it to duck down the volume of my bass, I'm actually going to use it to push up the volume of my bass on the offbeat, because like I say, I am a maverick. So. Let's have a play about with it. So what I'm going to do is turn it down so it's only 
on one band, which is affecting the whole frequency spectrum. And I'm going to activate the sidechain by clicking this button here. Set up the sidechain routing. And for my sidechain source, I'm going to select my open hi-hat. And let's have a listen to the bass without any processing on to begin with. So let's just listen to that. So again, you're going to need to be listening in headphones or with monitors to be able to hear this because the real, real low bass. Let's get back to Squasher. So with my sidechain activated, I'm going to click on this drop down menu here. Click on the input and in the drop down menu, select my sidechain one, which was my open hi-hat. And I'm going to send that to the gate. So let's have a listen to that. Let's pull up the drive. And we can close the gate and make it a bit more staccato by pulling up the gate. Now let's add some upwards compression. Pull down the drive. Let's add a second band. And activate the sidechain on that as well. Select sidechain one, and I'm going to send that to the gate as well. Let's pull down the dry wet a bit. And let's bring in the drums. And let's take off the squasher so we can A, B before and after. Man, <laughs> this plugin squasher is so much fun. There's so much you can do with it. I mean, I should probably just do a whole tutorial just on this one squasher plugin, but yep, yeah, that's how I'm getting that bounce on the bass, that side chain type effect but the opposite way around okay so you've waited long enough let's do some actual sidechain compression i'm going to do that on this pad channel let's listen to that on its own let's bring up a cubase's compressor i can spell properly so just the regular compressor going to activate the sidechain and as a sidechain source I'm going to select my kick drum and let's have a listen. So not much is happening right now because threshold's all the way up so let's pull the ratio up a bit and pull down the threshold. And let's bring in the drums. And now it's just a case of playing about with the release to get the right amount of bounce. So in a nutshell, that's sidechain compression in Cubase. Really simple to set up, really simple to use. Probably should play about with my makeup gain, take it off auto. But yeah, sidechain compression, done. Right, this next effect has been around in Cubase forever. Like I remember using this in university. So that would have been about 20 years ago. And well, let's have a look at it. I'm using it on this tension string channel. And let's bring it up. And it is, of course, the MIDI gate. 
and it does what it says on the tin. It's a gate which is triggered by MIDI. So in order to use it, you need to set up a MIDI channel. So we can see down here, I've set up a MIDI channel and on the MIDI sends, I'm sending this MIDI to my tension strings channel, insert MIDI gate. And on the MIDI channel, you can just see I have a MIDI note, which is being played on the off beats. You can play them wherever you want because it's MIDI and it doesn't matter what pitch you're playing at because you're just using it as an input for the MIDI gate. So let's have a listen to it. Bring up the strings channel and let's just listen. Bring up the MIDI gate. And you see we have super simple controls. Attack, hold, and release. And because this is a MIDI channel, you can see I'm adding a cheeky little extra note at the back end here. Let's bring that in with everything else. MIDI gate, you should know about it, you should use it. Like I say, it's been around forever. Super reliable, always has been, always will be. Right, so finally I have this piano channel. It's just playing the same chords as the pad is. And you can see we've got quite a lot of low mid information. And I'm kind of worried that I might be getting in the way of the bass. So to check that in Cubase's channel strip, I'm going to click on the drop down menu, select bass so we can have the bass EQ curve come in as a reference behind it and let's have a look. So the bass is an orange here and you can see we're clashing quite a lot here. Round about the 100, 150 mark. So what I'm going to do is use a frequency. Bring this up and let's set band 2 to about that 100, 125, 150 range. I'm going to change the view from single, uh, from multi, sorry, to single. Go to my activate sidechain, click on the cog, add sidechain source, and I'm going to select my base. So on this band two, I'm going to activate the dynamics and under sidechain, change it from internal to sidechain one, which was my base. Let's pull down the gain on this. And now every time the base hits, the EQ should duck down. Can change the threshold amount, make it more or less drastic. Cool. So now we should have a little bit more space for our bass, but let's get the sidechain effect. Now, because I'm using frequency or because I can, I don't want this to pump the whole of the signal. I just want it to pump a specific band. So let's click on five, for example, open dynamics. Now I want the kick drum to trigger this one. So I'm going to go to my sidechain routine and I'm going to go to sidechain two, select my kick drum and let's pull down the gain on this. So now every time the kick drum hits, this band should come down and it shouldn't affect T, which is being pulled down by the bass. Let's have a listen. Oh. Got to activate sidechain two. Okay. And there we go. Cool. And because this is an EQ, let's do some EQing. Let's change this to a high shelf. Bring up the high end of it. Let's 
let's give it a bit more pump in. Bring that in with everything else. So much pump in, so much groove. But like I said at the beginning of the video, frequency is only available to users of a Cubase Pro. So if you are in Elements or an artist and you're looking for a third party solution to do something similar to frequency, I recommend Isotop and the EQ that comes with Neutron 3. Now, Isotop on Neutron and all of the Isotop products are available to buy on Plugin Boutique. Now, again, I have an affiliate link for Plugin Boutique, which is in the description below. So you can grab a hold of this at no extra cost to yourself and help out with the channel because I do get a little commission on that. But let's have a look at how to set that similar effect up in Neutron. So we click on the activate sidechain, select a source, and we go to kick. Now with this plugin, you can only select one source at a time. So if you wanted to do the bass and the kick thing, you would have to load up multiple instances. But anyway, we've got it on a kick. Let's select an EQ band, click on this arrow, hit dynamic, hit sidechain, hit external, and now the kick drum will activate that EQ band. Okay, so as always, thanks for watching. Big up to all the subscribers for all the support. And if you're not subscribed yet, maybe now's a good time to think about it. But anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. Peace.